I haven't uploaded a video in quite a while. I've been quite busy despite this whole COVID thing. I've had to travel around the country and help various relatives that aren't able to leave their homes, um, that needed stuff done. So I went and did it. But I got back and I've got a pile of projects here to work on and I picked one and it is this uh, Windy Hill Square. Now it's all done and I'll show you how I did it in the video. Um, there's machining. Um, I went After I was done machining I went over to Chuck Bomarito's place. He's uh, aka Outside Screwball and we ground Grounded on his machine, which I didn't get any video of, but you can look at Keith Rucker or one of those guys um, that did the same thing. Um, since I'm not going to show the grinding, I'll tell you kind of how we did it. Uh, Chuck has a precision cube, I guess you'd call it, it's like six inch square piece, and uh, it's th the worst side on it is four tenths out. And the best side on it is one-tenth. So we clamped it to the square and indicated one side as flat as we can get it and ground that side. Then we flipped the whole cube over without moving the clamps and ground the other side. So that these two are as accurate as the uh, precision cube is. And... I was going to then scrape it, um, you've seen several videos of me scraping. What I have here is a Windy Hill Foundry 90 degree angle plate, rough casting, and the hope is to machine it and grind it and scrape it into a 90 degree reference uh, device. So I've been looking at it. I had um, some ideas of putting some holes through here to mount it, but uh, the grill pattern here doesn't quite match my fixture plate. So I'm going to try and just hold it down with some hold down clamps, see how that works. So this is my idea to hold it while I machine this side flat and then I'll flip it over and machine the other side and then I'm going to have to figure out what I want to do for these edges.
Okay, here's where we stand. I took this over to my surface plate and made sure that it didn't rock. I had um, one little high spot on here, right in here, that I went ahead and hand filed down. I just wanted to get this flat so it didn't rock. And then I brought it over here to this plate. I put it on the plate and it was rocking on the plate. So that told me my plate wasn't flat. So I just went through and skimmed this whole plate. I took uh, three thousandths off the plate. So now the casting sits nice and flat. So I'm gonna do the other side now. Okay, so it's flat within about plus or minus a thousandth through the center of this web until you get to the corner here and then it drops off two thousandths and comes back towards zero. It's pretty flat down the center. Okay, what I found is that it's relatively flat down the center here, but it drops down towards the outside. So it's high there, low there, high there, really low there. Now high there, lower there. This whole leg is kind of high. And that's due to the way that it was held. I'm pushing down on this web, which is bending it up this way. And so this side gets a little more machining than uh, this side. So I'll have to find a way to clamp it a little lighter without um, bending it. Okay, what I decided to do is drill four holes in the casting and they are exactly 90 degrees to each other um, and the exact spacing is the plate underneath. And I'm going to cut the sides with an end mill in the fixture plate. So I will be able to cut those almost as accurate as my machine X and Y travel is. So I'm hoping I can get it within a thou uh, as far as uh, the squareness. So that's the plan. Let's see what happens. Okay, the finish looks uh, pretty good for machining. Both those edges. Now when I put it on the surface plate and hinge it, it's hinging it right on this corner, right on this very edge. So it's got a bit of a, it's got a curve like this to it. And the same thing here, it's hinging on that end. So it's hinging here and here. So again, this side is curved, which doesn't surprise me because when you get to the end, this is going to flex a little more than in the center here. So if I put this on here, put my square there. This square somewhat accurate. I've compared it with my other squares. I put a light behind it. Okay, I'm putting a light behind here. You can see it's hitting on the bottom 
I got light shining through all the way up and then it's hitting on the top. I think that's probably less than a thou. Put a feeler gauge in there. But um, I think all they have to do is a little scraping on on the ends, each ends to get it square. This time I decided to lap it. So I have some laps that I made and I lapped it and got it flat, pretty darn flat. Even though you can, it looks, you can see the, the grinding wheel marks on it. Um, I put my optical flat on it and my uh, single wavelength light and was able to see fringes, parallel fringes. So that means that it's flat mm, within maybe... 50 millionths to the maximum resolution I can get on my light is 14 millionths. So somewhere in there, flat. And as I was lapping it, I kept checking it for its hinge point and checking it for squareness against a precision ground granite square. And I ended up with something that I believe it would be interesting to test it on a really accurate system that is probably square within 50 millionth, I think. And I also lapped these sides lightly. Not a whole lot, I don't know that it matters what you do with these sides. I don't know if you'd ever want this to be square against something, and I don't know. But um, I did it just to, just to get it flat, and since I had the lapping compound and everything out. Um, I went ahead and lapped it. Now, what I found for lapping compound, what I was using is some of the this time saver lapping compound, and this would, uh, I, even though it says it's fine, I got it uh, get it down, and it, it had still still really rough. But it ended up using turtle wax rubbing compound for the final lap and that's when I made my laps I found this gave me the ultimate finish the last 50 millionth or so the nice thing about this is it cleans up easy with water so that's what the video is all about um, I'll cut over something here and I'll show you kind of the lapping process I did um, but this one's all done. I might paint it. I haven't decided. But uh, Windy Hill, Mississippi. Um, square. Cast iron. This thing's beautiful, by the way. The cast iron. I had no inclusions anywhere in this thing. It was perfect as far as uh, the casting. So that that's really nice. And the fact that I could get this finish, beautiful beautiful job. These are the laps I used. I made these in another video um, using the method Tom Lipton showed. So what I did, and I gotta be careful I don't want to lap that again, but I put it on these laps and I go back and forth and I keep hopping to different laps and then I'd rotate the laps and then I'd do it again, and then I would take the laps and lap them, uh, the three lap method, three plate method, lap them against themselves, go through all that, and then go back and start lapping again. So uh, in between lapping, I'd clean it off and then check it against my granite square and check it to see where it was hinging. And, uh, you know, if it was... It was hinging here on the end when I lapped it I put pressure at this end while I lapped it and if it was hinging over here I put pressure on the back side and lapped it um, and that's how I I got these high spots even though we ground it this end and this end were just were like a tenth high on each side of here and here um, I also had to demagnetize it a couple times when you are rubbing iron against steel or iron against iron, you're basically creating a magnet. 
so you have to demagnetize it otherwise um, number one you'll pick up uh, particles any metal particles that are around that'll pick it up and stick to it which makes it hard to hinge hard to clean the hinge and the other thing is just the magnetic field in there will cause it to warp um, so anyway that's how uh, that's how I lapped it uh, here you can see the type of finish I have on here and I use this uh, optical flat it's supposed to be uh, 10 millionth flat and uh, I use that to check it for flatness. Um, I, I was unable to film it because the, the lines are so light and my all I have is a this is a monochrome uh, light source. Um, Tom Lipton has a much better light source. It's much brighter and, and you can see the fringes better. But uh, that's how the whole lapping process worked. Um, I didn't film it because it's literally two hours of rubbing back and forth on these plates. It's uh, quite boring, about as boring as you can get as far as watching, uh, almost like watching the paint dry. So that's how the lapping worked and I'm really happy with the results and like I say I believe it'd be nice to uh, if somebody had um, a setup accurate enough to where I could measure this down to 50 millionth or so to see how square it is and how flat it is. But I, I think it's really good. Way better than, than uh, my purpose would ever be. Okay, I've got a really bright flashlight here. And I'm putting it, running it up and down. And there is no light coming through between here other than the very, very bottom where this uh, where this radius is on this. Now this is a uh, precision ground granite square, supposed to be within a tenth of square.